Good evening and welcome to E! News. I'm Shahan Ramki Soon. It's great to have you with us. Our top stories tonight. Raging fires continue to ravage the Overberg region, but that's not stopping some from trying to salvage their belongings. The ANC launches its election manifesto with the same promises of land, jobs and economic growth. This leads our bulletin. Firefighters continue to battle blazes in the Overberg region of the Western Cape. They've been working around the clock, but strong winds and flare-ups are making things difficult. Meanwhile, some residents are already moving back to their homes after being evacuated. Atiyam Tongana reports. The aftermath of a devastating fire. It's affected many areas in the Overstrand area, which include Betty's Bay, Franskral, Garvedeskral and Hermanus. Those affected by the recent fires have had to move in with family members, others into community halls. Most of those affected here in Betty's Bay are retired. Some of them were able to salvage a few of their belongings, whilst others lost everything. It's sad, look at it. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's memory says it's gone. All our children, children grew up here, you know, from babies up to the well, and university, so. The only thing we have is the clothes on our body. I lost photos of my son and died. I lost everything. And I feel this is very unfair to us. Over 12,000 hectares of vegetation have been destroyed. The municipality has yet to establish the cause of all three fires. The Betis Bay fire, we can confirm, is the New Year's Day fire. Approximately 10.30 yesterday morning we had a flare-up, so that fire specifically, um, we can confirm that that is because of the flare. Um, the Carvedes Kral Hermanus fire is approximately 40 kilometers away from that specific area, so it's not linked to that fire, so that fire needs to be investigated. As well as the, the Franz Kral fire, it's about from Hermanus and another 60 kilometers away approximately, so that fire also needs to be investigated. Some of the residents that were evacuated have moved back to their homes and a 71-year-old remains in hospital. Firefighters remain on the ground to monitor the situation as such flare-ups pick up across this area. I, Tim Tongana, Franz Kral in the Western Cape. The UNISA shutdown has ended. University officials and the Student Representative Council have come to an agreement after a protracted stalemate. The Department of Higher Education has intervened when the communication broke down between student representatives and the institution. UNISA says operations will return to normal soon. We are pleased to announce that we reached agreement with the students on the number of issues that were contained in the Memorandum of Understanding. But most importantly, we reached agreement that the strike is called off with immediate effect and that as of Monday, 14th January, operations will return to normality. UNISA's SRC president says the university has made satisfactory commitments. Clearly the interventions that have been made by management uh, allow us to call off the, 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 the national shutdown. Uh, understanding fully that uh, in the institution we still face so many challenges, uh, but we have resolved that some of those challenges are going to then explore again a boardroom. We're going to try to restore confidence between management of UNISA and ourselves. The ANC is promising to focus on economic growth, land reform and job creation. President Sol Ramaphosa delivered the party's election manifesto at Durban's Moses Mabida Stadium earlier today. Sankelo Maseko reports. The official takeoff of the African National Congress's 2019 election campaign and party president Sol Ramaphosa didn't waste time in outlining the ANC's ambitions. On the backdrop of joblessness and an ailing economy, this is the promise of the oldest liberation movement to the electorate. We have a plan to ensure that investment can improve. We have a plan to raise 1.3 trillion rand in a new, new investments over the next five years. Working with all social partners, we will intensify our efforts to restore investor co confidence in our country. We will implement reforms 
in economic sectors that have greatest potential to grow and create jobs. There is yet again the promise of aiding small businesses through state procurement and collaboration with the private sector. We will use government massive procurement to support transformation and job creation, including allocating at least 30% of procurement spend to small businesses and cooperatives. Land reform is also in sight as the National Assembly resolved to amend Section 25 of the Constitution. Land expropriation without compensation was the ANC's 54th National Conference resolution. Now it's part of the governing party's 2019 election manifesto. The African National Congress has fought to undo a grave historical injustice and give effect to what the Freedom Charter set out that land must be shared amongst those who work it. In this manifesto, we outline elements of a plan to accelerate land reform, making use of a range of complementary measures, including, where appropriate, expropriation of land without compensation. We will continue to promote a range of land ownership forms, public, private, cooperative, family and communal. South Africa's socio-economic inequalities persist as ordinary people battle increasing unemployment, poor service delivery and an ailing health system among others. And with the election season upon us, the sight of politicians crisscrossing the length and breadth armed with their promises will also increasingly become a familiar sight. Samkele Masego, Durban. Now one political analyst says the ANC's promises as a political party and its delivery as the governing party are worlds apart. I think this manifesto is a wish list, but the, the details of the manifesto, uh, to a certain extent, to be quite honest, uh, is resemble a mirage. And why I'm saying that, yes, ANC as a political organization, they can say anything, they can be held accountable, but ANC as a governing party, when they're in power, is a totally different thing. Why I'm saying it's a totally different thing? Currently, everyone knows very well that our fiscus is in a very embarrassing state. And also, the issue of um, the, the capacity of our state is, 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 is the one that is not taking South Africa forward. And all this corruption, we are in a country where there is about 80 billion irregular expenditure. How are we going to deal with those things? Of which I think when they talk about corruption here, they are talking about the corruption on the soft spots. They are not talking corruption in the hardest terms. Well, there was plenty of music, entertainment and colour as the ANC launched its election manifesto. It says it'll accelerate service delivery if voters give it yet another chance to govern. Thousands of supporters packed the Moses Mabida Stadium. Sipa Mandla Goge was there. Braving the scorching heat and windy weather, thousands of ANC supporters came out to listen to their president. The day was filled with festivities, long political speeches and plenty of entertainment. The governing party pulled out all stops to make its manifesto launch a success. Some of its National Executive Committee members even got to show off their lesser-known talents. And the artist known as Rasta was also at Moses Mapida Stadium to capture the mood. Although there have been questions over the quality of his work, he's not moved. Each and every time I get critics on a painting that is not done, you find it's being posted yet it's not done. Despite what others may think of his work, Rasta has no doubts about his talent. It's exactly Ramaphosa. I think you will love it also. The governing party promises to accelerate service delivery after the elections. But before then, there is a grueling election campaign 
and hopefully winning the trust of the people. Sipamandla Koke, Durban. The traditional and Khoisan leadership bill passed in the NCOP and it is being rejected by some. The leader of Chief Khoisan SA says it doesn't address their initial demands to government. A group is campaigning outside or camping rather outside the union buildings. They're demanding preference when it comes to land expropriation without compensation, recognition of their mother tongue as an official language and say they should not fall under the coloured race group but instead be identified as Khoi Khoi. We the group that is at the union building, we first and foremost reject the bill. A reason for rejecting the bill is that uh, throughout the years when they introduced the bill to us, there was a lot of submission that was done on the bill. And up until now, the, the submissions that was done is not on the bill that is passed at the, at the parliament. Now, what we are saying is that, that firstly, we are standing here for four demands. Now, the bill does not and I repeat, it does not reflect the, the demands that we've put forward in 2017 to the then Deputy President, General Mahmoud Coming up on E! News, police are looking for the parents of a child who's been beaten so badly that she's fighting for her life. Welcome back. Police are searching for the parents of a two-year-old girl who was allegedly severely beaten and dropped off at a Port Elizabeth clinic. She has injuries to her head and is on life support. Sandy McCowan has the story. Hello, children. I missed you. Elmarie Fandemerva has taken over 60 abandoned children into her home in the past 12 years. Many of them have been neglected or abused. While many children arrive at Elmery's home with injuries that are starting to heal. The two-year-old left at this clinic by an unknown woman was allegedly so severely battered, the nurses had to rush the little girl to the nearest hospital. And she's in intensive care on uh, life support systems. At this point, it looks like she was assaulted, hit with things. It does not look like she was cut or stabbed or shot or anything. So we do suspect that she was um, having a severe assault that took place on her. Elmarie says it takes years, and in some cases the children never get over the trauma of their past. They will forever be struggling with relationships and trust issues and self-worth issues and those sorts. There is help. Um, the younger you intervene, the better their chances of actually healing is. The National Adoption Coalition estimates 3,500 babies are abandoned every year in South Africa. Abandonment is illegal in our country. Um, it is a crime. Uh, the parents can be prosecuted. So that's why it happens in all sorts of dodgy and places where, where, where they hope that they won't be found and they certainly won't be seen doing it. While these children have started their journey to healing, the little girl known as Mazi fights for her life in hospital. Sandy McCowan, Port Elizabeth. Further afield now, Paris is reeling after a massive explosion in the city centre. Two firefighters and a Spanish woman have died. Nine people have been seriously hurt and dozens are being treated for less severe injuries. Authorities won't stand by for more yellow vest protests and swiftly reacted. A gas leak is believed to be behind the explosion at a bakery. The Democratic Republic of Congo's opposition leader, Martin Fayulu, is appealing the outcome of the presidential election. He's gone to the Constitutional Court to have the results declared null and void. Fayulu's supporters protested outside court. The country's electoral commission announced on Thursday that Felix Chisikedi won the election. But an observer mission from the Catholic Church says its own tallies show Fayulu won. The court now has eight days to consider the appeal. For the break, your weather details, and then there's some serious monkey business happening in Japan.
Good evening and welcome to the Weather Center. We're going to start off Sunday with mostly cloudy skies over the western parts of the country with drizzly conditions along the west coast and the Justin interior. To be partly cloudy for eastern South Africa with isolated thundershowers over the northeastern areas. Then in the afternoon it will be mostly sunny and hot for the western half of the country but thundershowers are forecast once again from Limpopo through Mpumalanga into the interior of Kasulu Natal. Then on Sunday night it's going to become mostly cloudy and drizzly for the south coast and the Justin interior. We are thunderstorms who persist for parts of eastern South Africa, and we are going to see rain and thunderstorms over the eastern areas of the Eastern Cape and across southern KwaZulu Natal. Now, here's taking it closer to your part of the country. It's going to stay sunny and sizzling hot for much of the northern Cape, but we start off the day with a bit of drizzle for Springbok, warming to 26 degrees in the afternoon. Drizzly conditions are also forecast in the morning for the west coast of the Western Cape, including Cape Town, where high of 25 is forecast. It will be mostly sunny and hot for the interior of the province. A mostly sunny and hot day is also forecast for much of the Eastern Cape. It will be pleasantly warm for Port Elizabeth, peaking at 25 degrees. A hot one is also forecast for much of Kwasulu Natal with thundershows forecast for the northeastern sections. We are going to see isolated thundershows persisting for much of Mpumalanga and Bombela, warming to around 35 degrees. It's going to stay hot for Limpopo with isolated thundershows expected for your Sunday afternoon. It's going to be sizzling hot for much of the northwest with mostly sunny skies in most areas, but thundershowers will persist around Rustenburg. A mostly sunny and hot day is also forecast for the free state Bloemfontein, peaking at around 34 degrees. We will once again see isolated thundershowers over northern Gauteng, where Pretoria should peak at around 35 degrees on Sunday afternoon. Now on Monday, we stay with isolated thundershowers over the northeastern areas, light rain for parts of Kwasilu Natal and the eastern areas of the eastern Cape. It will be mostly sunny for the western interior then on tuesday stormy weather is forecast for eastern south africa light rain is expected for port elizabeth and george and finally hold the line the monkeys are in town well not here a resident of mutsu city in japan woke up to the sight of more than a dozen monkeys crossing the power lines outside a house imiko yokoyama is used to seeing a few on occasion but a whole troop crossing is pretty unusual she filmed them and sent the clip to her daughter who posted them on Twitter. From there, needed to say, people went bananas for the monkeys, and well, it went viral. Here's a reminder of our top stories before we go. Raging fires continue to ravage the Overberg region, but that's not stopping some from trying to salvage their belongings. From Ishahan Ramkisun and the rest of the team, good night.